Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crilly. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Today I'm going to be doing something kind of different. I want to focus almost exclusively on shading, which is something I hardly ever do because it's very time consuming and, and hard to show the entire shading process in a single video because uh, a drawing like this could take me like two hours to shade. Um, but I think I've come up with a way of doing it. Now, uh, before I go any further, I want to explain that this is a, an extreme close-up of the Pietà the great uh, sculpture by Michelangelo that uh, stands in St. Peter's in Rome. And I think it's going to be a, uh, a good subject for showing very subtle gradations in the shading. Now, my plan is to begin uh, all in time-lapse, doing most of the shading for almost the entire picture, except for this like upper right-hand corner. And then, uh, once I've done all this shading over here, I'm going to stop with the time-lapse. I'm going to try to do as much real-time as possible and, and show you, um, you know, what the shading process is like and give you all my best advice. So, bear with me, I'm going to go ahead and uh, kick it into time-lapse for, I would say, about 80% of the surface uh, of this illustration. Alright, well I feel like I've completed enough of the illustration uh, that I can now start working on uh, this uh, area here that I'm going to try to complete as much as I can in real time. I do want to, um, you know, I don't want this uh, video to go very much beyond, let's say, 30 minutes. So um, I won't make any big promises about the, uh, the entire rest of this video all being done real time, but uh, we'll do as much as we can. So, uh, first thing I'm going to say, and I know I've said this in videos before, but notice that I'm holding the pencil way back, uh, uh, away from the tip. I tend to hold real close when I want to do uh, precise work, and then when I'm shading, very often I hold way back so that I can get the pencil lead, more of it exposed uh, to the page, and have, um, you know, build up a very light area of shading. Another benefit of holding way back is it allows you to reduce the pressure uh, of the lead against the paper, you are less inclined to accidentally make really dark lines, I find, anyway. Uh, and maybe I should just say in general that uh, the, this whole video features my approach to shading, and even within that category, my approach to shading today, basically this particular uh, illustration, I shade different things in different ways. So uh, please t uh, take all of this in terms of just a, a demonstration video and not me saying, hey, everybody, you all ought to shade this way. No, absolutely not. Um, but I do feel bad that a lot of my videos tend to um, time lapse entirely through uh, the shading process. And uh, I was hoping with this little technique of, of sort of only completing one part of the drawing that I could get around that and do a little more of it real time. Uh, and I think it is useful for you to see the speed at which this is going. I should say that the, the rest of this illustration uh, I had started at around 8.30 and now it's um, like 10.50, so uh, well over two hours it took me to get to the stage where I am today. Um, and uh, so let's go ahead and get into some of my words of advice about uh, the, the technique that I'm using. I'm starting with a base layer, um, working light to dark, and uh, that just generally speaking, if there's a certain logic to that, if you go really dark uh, right from the outset, it's very hard to uh, erase away and get it back to what you want it to uh, really be at. So, uh, you know, certainly for this type of shading that I'm doing here today, uh, caution is the way to go, and so that's why I'm, you know, start light and very gradually build dark. I'm doing a sort of little circular motions of the pencil. I'm not real focused on trying to have the lines go in a particular direction. Sometimes the, there is a, a method of shading whereby you, you try to follow the contour of what you're representing, especially when you're doing cross hashing, hatching and using lines and stuff. Um, it, that is that can be a good technique for suggesting the form uh, like of this eyelid and moving all of the lines only in that direction uh, we're sort of cooperating with that direction I'm doing more as you can see sort of circular um, somewhat random uh, shading here and maybe just as a general principle you know I think uh, a lot of times with a professional illustrator 
you have in your mind the final um, uh, illustration that you're heading toward, but you are not trying to leap immediately toward that. And, um, you know, like over the years I've seen people's comments on my videos uh, saying, boy, it looked so terrible at the beginning. You know, when you first started out, <laughs> uh, the drawing looked really kind of bad, and then somehow t by the end of it you rescued it and made it look good. Well, that's because I, when I'm starting out, I understand these are not the final lines. This is just kind of prep work, and I'm going to be building on top of it, and I don't try to leap immediately towards beautiful line work. It, it's, uh, in, in a way, it's nice to be relieved of that duty um, to just, uh, you know, start out with slightly cruddy looking lines. They're very light, so you don't have to worry about um, erasing them too much. And then little by little you, you allow that sort of more refined, polished um, a type of uh, finished line work to wait until the end, you know, and, and by then you've sort of got a clearer idea of uh, of where you want the uh, uh, darkest areas to be and so forth. Um, there's some irregularities you can see here, and you're going to see me using my finger. A lot of people object to using uh, your finger to smear things around. Um, I have never had any problem with it myself, but... Um, uh, some people will prefer to buy these um, blending tools, and uh, by all means, if you like that idea, you can find them at art stores. They're made generally made out of paper, and they allow you to blend things without touching the paper with your fingers. And also, they they come to a point, so you can do maybe more detailed blending. So certainly uh, something worth. Maybe I should go buy one of those, and then I'll, in a future video I'll demonstrate how one of those blending sticks uh, is used. So, you know, I always knew that when I did this video showing shading that I would be kind of up against the wall in terms of my uh, narration because it's such an incremental process, and I do like to kind of keep a pattern uh, going as I draw. Um, so... Forgive me if this is not exactly the most exciting video you ever watched, but I wanted to try at least once, maybe once in a while, to do a video like this that shows just, uh, you know, the amount of patience that's required, how slowly um, the shading process can be, at least for some artists, for me, certainly. Uh, I am taking my time, I am maintaining patience. Uh, let me talk about the importance of contrast. Um, part of the success of uh, this part of the illustration is due to um, the darks being really dark and the lights being really light. And um, those of you who watch my videos, you know that I use a black colored pencil, black Prisma color. It doesn't have to be this company. Any quality colored pencil will do the job, but uh, I use those to get those really dark blacks. And I do think that that's pretty key in terms of shading to getting a good result. Um, I suppose sometimes you may be working on an illustration that's uh, deliberately washed out and has almost no real darks at all. I mean, I can imagine like uh, foggy trees in the mist and everything is really far away and you can barely see anything. That would be an example of an illustration that has is very low contrast and everything is just shades of pale gray. But um, with the exception of that type of uh, effect, uh, most of the time, you're going for um, a wide variety of lights and darks. Uh, so, like right here, I'm I'm going, you know, in this area of the eyelid, is I'm going just a shade above white. So I get this kind of uh, super pale gray. And, uh, like, even right there, I feel like I accidentally went a little too dark, and I may have to go and lighten that up. Um, but you want to have... Uh, or I want to have the widest variety of different shades of gray uh, going all the way, little by little, toward an actual jet black. I want to have the widest variety of uh, those colors uh, as I can. I don't want to have most of the drawing be um, very similar in terms of the the you know it all being almost the same shade of gray. I think it's hard for me to imagine that being a good looking drawing. I think the human eye sort of 
craves contrast. Now what I'm doing right now is not really shading, it's, it's going in to revive this very faint uh, line that incredibly Michelangelo was able to chisel into this stone. Um, just uh, it goes right across the eyelid. And uh, as I said, I do normally want to go from light to dark, but I think what I might do just to sort of um, supply some extra information at this stage in the video is to uh, pull out the black Prismacolor. And I'm going to go ahead and start darkening in this area of the eye here, because I know that this bit is going to go completely black, and I can sort of, without fear, uh, come in here and just go ahead and take take this particular area to to black and that's something that you know happens sometimes especially when you when there's a very clearly identifiable uh, area that you know is black and you, it won't be a mistake for you to go black on that area you can just go ahead and do that and then you sort of know what your range is from the white of you know the very whitest to the very darkest and then you just work at uh, getting the full variety between those two extremes. Um, and I hope that people will enjoy this video. You know, I, I always see the comments on most of my other videos uh, of people saying, boy, you, you fast forwarded through the shading. How come you never show us the shading? And uh, it really, the, part of the problem is that the, it's such an incremental process that as I try to do a video in which I show all the shading real time, I do sort of start to run out of things to say and I begin to feel a little awkward. Maybe the trick in the future will be just to do a, a video in which I switch to music uh, to replace the talking. Um, you tell me in the comment section, do you find it useful to see all of this done real time? Um, is it so crucial to understand, you know, second by second, minute by minute, just how long it takes to, to do good quality shading? I suppose that in itself is something of a, surf, uh, uh, a service or a benefit of, of this approach. But hopefully some of the rest of you can, when you watch this video, you'll sort of think, oh, so that's why he <laughs> brings in old man time lapse. I'm, I'm the man who rescues his videos. See what happens when you get rid of me? Uh, it really is, um, you know, I think, at least for me, uh, understandable why the, the videos tend to have the first part of it be more real-time and then the last shading part go all time-lapse. Just because of how painstaking shading is. But, you know, we've done like, um, coming up on 12 minutes that I've put in here so far. And uh, hopefully that in itself will give you uh, some sense of the sort of deliberateness with which I achieve this stuff. You know, the, I mean, it's a battle against impatience in a lot of ways, you know. Um, I think when I was a kid, a lot of my drawings would get messed up just because I kind of got bored and I got tired and I just started rushing things. And um, The process of becoming a professional, or at least refining your skills as you get older, is uh, one of acquiring patience. Having faith uh, that the end result will be good if you go slow and steady and not allow yourself to start racing, race, uh, rushing things. One thing I'm noticing now, you know, when I uh, when I do these light areas, there is sort of a wide stroke of the br of the pencil, right? And I'm noticing as I get into this part of it that um, I haven't moved up to the front of the pencil. I'm still sort of holding it a little further back. But the notice that the strokes of the pencil are getting smaller. They're sort of tighter little circles. Um, and so, yeah, that's something that actually, without really thinking about it too much, I've been doing. Um, and I didn't, you know, until I stopped and focused on my process just now, I didn't notice that I was doing that. But that's something you can maybe keep in mind, if indeed you want to 
get this kind of an effect. Um, it might not be a bad idea to start with the wider movements and then as you go along, as you're building up, you know, so I'm just, like I was saying, I'm sort of building towards these darker gray, grays. That's when uh, the circular motions of my pencil uh, get smaller and I start tightening things up a little bit. And uh, otherwise, <laughs> I'm beginning to regret the decision already. Real time? Really? You're going to continue doing all of this real time? What else are you going to say, man? Uh, yeah, the truth is you do start to run out of things to say. So how about if I try this? I'm going to continue doing real time for a while, but I'm going to stop talking. And I'm going to uh, pop in some music. Just to sort of uh, relieve uh, my viewers of hearing me ramble on without saying anything uh, useful. So I'm going to go ahead, but I'm not going to go into time lapse. I'm going to keep it real time. I'm going to play probably one of my garage band songs. They tend to go on for two or three minutes. And uh, hopefully by the time I come back from that little break, I will have come up with other things to say about the uh, shading process. Otherwise, we may just have to wind this down in terms of uh, the narrated part of the video. So, okay, we'll take a little break here, a little musical interlude, and I will we'll be back hopefully with some uh, more uh, narrated instruction. Well, um, I didn't come up with super brilliant things to say, but I did notice one thing, and that is that, um, you know, the black colored pencil is very good at going uh, completely black. Not so good about creating um, a dark gray that does not allow any patches of the um, paper to show through. And in this area, I needed sort of deep shade that was close to black, but not completely black. And I started going for that, but then I found that quite a lot of the uh, uh, little tiny little specks of uh, 
white from the page were actually showing through. And uh, so uh, I came back in with my Dixon Ticonderoga, which is really just an ordinary number two pencil, and uh, found that that allowed me to sort of fill in some of those, um, you know, tiny, tiny little white gaps between the, uh, you know, the black colored pencil, which uh, again, for, it's just not quite so good at, um, and, until you press all the way down and go completely black, you end up with this, uh, not so smooth tone, dark in some places, and then not quite even touching the paper, and little tiny little specks of white showing through that sort of ruin the effect. So, um, if indeed you want to try this uh, kind of two pencil technique that I'm doing, that is, uh, like I said, ordinary number two pencil combined with a black colored pencil, you may find that the black colored pencil um, needs to be, work together with the um, number two pencil in some of those areas where you're trying to go for a uh, quite a dark gray. Um, I guess the other thing that I would want to say is that um, you know when you're doing a drawing like this you um, tend to focus on the uh, the eyes, this, these sort of more dramatic areas very naturally we sort of emotionally connect with the eyes, we connect with these contours, you know, the nose and so forth, but as an artist you need to let go of that a little bit and realize that these blankish looking areas of pale gray are just as important and they need your attention just, just as much as these uh, focal points. And in fact, uh, very often I'd say the difference between a, um, a good drawing and a great drawing is, uh, are these seemingly blank looking spaces, these humble pale gray kind of areas, if, if you give those areas a lot of devotion, you know, in terms of your shading, they make a huge difference. Um, but you do, you have to sort of force yourself to pay attention to them because your, your eyes naturally gravitate towards those focal points. So, um, that's, you know, hey, I still, what do you know, I stumbled onto a useful thing to say. <laughs> The gray areas, the humble uns unsung heroes of our drawing. Uh, those little pale uh, uh, gray areas really do make a huge difference, and, um, especially in terms of, you know, when you're studying whatever it is that you're drawing, pay attention to, is it really completely white, or is it just a very, very super pale shade of gray? And if it is the latter, make sure that you are reflecting that in your illustration. Um, you know, the the Pietà sculpture in Rome, when it is uh, lit in a certain way, uh, some areas are going to go completely white. You know, the light is sort of glinting off of that. But the very, you know, for a huge amount of the rest of the surface of the sculpture, it's more of just a very light gray. Uh, and you're training yourself as an artist to see those differences. Well, I feel like I did kind of half keep my promise here in terms of um, doing a fair amount of it real time. Uh, I think we've gone well over 20 minutes now. And uh, I think that I am going to have to sort of have mercy on all of you <laughs> in terms of your patience of, of listening to me ramble on and on. Uh, and I am sadly going to have to go back to the time lapse. But please let me know what you thought about this video. I mean, uh, before I do, you know, before I go back into the time lapse and then at the end sort of wind everything down, I just want to point out that, you know, a lot of times the goal with my video, uh, with any video that I do like this, is to start with a blank sheet of paper, or very close to a completely blank sheet of paper, and let you see the entire process from beginning to end, even if lots of it gets collapsed in, with time lapse. Um, as you saw with this video, you know, I started with uh, guidelines in place, did a few little uh, introductory remarks, and then I, uh, I very nearly completed, like I said, about 80% of it, all in time lapse. Now that's pretty radically different from what I usually do in these videos, so that I could do uh, a shading part of it very slowly and incrementally at the end. Let me know what you think of that format, because I can certainly do more video, not just shading videos, but all kinds of things that would um, 
be in the format that I use today, which is to say not starting with a blank page, starting with a partially completed illustration and then letting you see me uh, do one last section of it in a way that you can sort of understand is representative of what I did throughout the whole page. Um, and hopefully that... Um, yeah, it's just a, uh, offers you another way of me doing videos. Let me know what you think, if you enjoyed it. And be honest, if you felt that this one, watching me do this so slowly and slow, so gradually and listening to me sort of fumble around trying to think of things to say, if you thought that was a disaster <laughs> and that you're like, oh, yes, Mark, by all means, go back to the way you did things before because this was, you know, it was just sad, really, listening to you. <laughs> awkwardly trying to continue to generate new content and things to say. Um, yeah, let me know what you thought uh, one way or the other. If you liked it or hated it or whatever, somewhere in the middle, uh, please let me know in the comment section. I'll be reading those and it'll sort of influence uh, the way I do things going forward. You know, I've certainly, I think by the time I do another uh, How to Draw video, I will definitely be doing the old-fashioned way, which is to say uh, time-lapsing uh, through the end of it which is something I've gotten used to. Anyway, speaking of time-lapsing, let's go ahead and uh, bring in Old Man Time-Lapse to help me finish off the rest of this drawing. All right, well, there's my video on adding shading. Let me know what you thought about it. It is a tricky subject to cover uh, in terms of striking the right balance between uh, real-time and time-lapse, but it certainly is a very important part of the uh, drawing process, so you can be sure that I will continue revisiting this topic and try to cover it in different ways. But for now, let me go ahead and lay down this pencil. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I hope you found it useful, and I'll be back with another one real soon.